be aggressive about. Um, um, we don't tend to see a lot of vitamin K deficiencies, um, although vitamin K as a, as a factor in, uh, in blood clotting, you can see coagulation problems in somebody with cirrhosis. That doesn't necessarily mean there's a vitamin deficiency, and I think that, that I just want to mention that because if, if that's the case, you really shouldn't be focusing that much on replacing vitamin K. Again, it's really just management of cirrhosis. Um, um, and, and this was our, our also mentioned, uh, should you worry about the high lipid levels? Well, um, hyperlipidemia in PBC is very common, and often the levels are alarmingly high, and it's important that you, that you see a doctor that understands that that's the case. Um, if you switch doctors, uh, because for whatever reason, you need to make sure that, that the new doctor understands that as well. Um, it really is related to biliary metabolism. It's important to not ignore it, though. You shouldn't just assume that just because your lipids are high that you don't have a problem with lipids. Um, other factors that it could be high because of could be diabetes, obesity, a family history, or heart disease. So don't ignore it, but if you've made sure that you aren't at risk for heart disease or don't have any of these other conditions, then it could just be safely monitored and not necessarily treated. Um, there's some evidence that um, urso and even beta-colic acid can reduce the numbers a little bit, but again, because you're probably not at risk for having a problem from the lipids, it's not really a number that I would focus too much on unless it's because of needing treatment in the context of these other diseases. Um, but in any case, it's very safe to take statins and, and most other medications that you would need uh, for treatment of, of elevated lipids in the setting of PBC. Um, and so what, what is the basic maintenance schedule? What does follow-up look like? Well, every three to six months, you need to see uh, your physician and discuss the bilirubin level, the alkaline phosphatase level, ALT, and um, I, th I think there was a question about this earlier about uh, weight. Well, uh, ursodiol, at least, is uh, weight-based, and so it's important that if your weight goes up or down, that that's explored, even if your numbers look good. Sometimes that's, that's one of the first things to explore, that if your alkaline phosphatase and bilirubin aren't normal, make sure that you're on the right dose. But I always think that it's an important thing to make sure about anyway, even if your numbers look great. Um, once a year, I tend to check the uh, thyroid function, and I check vitamin levels. Um, actually, I often check vitamin levels a little more frequently. I check them when I first see a patient, and then if there's any abnormality, I tend to follow them very closely, especially, as I mentioned, the vitamin D. And at least every few years, I think it's a good idea to get some sort of imaging of your liver just to make sure that there aren't some obvious changes that may not have been picked up in the lab tests. Uh, because as somebody else mentioned also, part of the problem with PBC is that you may look fine on the outside, and it's these, these subtle things that are important to stay on top of. Um, and uh, you also need to have a, uh, a bone scan, a bone mineral density scan, uh, at least every few years. And if there's any problem, uh, sometimes more frequently. Um, and so how do you know how well the treatment is working? Usually that's with lab studies, especially following the alkaline phosphatase and the bilirubin. Um, and, and Dr. Veerling mentioned the um, alkaline phosphatase less than 1.67 times the upper limit of normal. Um, and, and, the, and he was also emphasizing that the lower the better, and that's, that's very true, and that's sort of the concept that you want. I think it's very easy um, and understandable for anyone to sort of say, okay, well, my number was this last month. It was a little high. Why don't we check it every week? Why don't we, if it's, if it's a little bit higher the next time, what does that mean? Does that mean that my liver is functioning that percent less? And the problem is there's no really direct relationship between the numbers as you go along and how well your liver works and doesn't work. Liver function on the whole is really just sort of a clinical uh, question. Um, of, and it's not, it doesn't just boil down to a number. So while I think numbers are important and essential, and I, and I agree that I think that scoring systems are going to become more important and more prevalent and more available online for you to just go in and see where your numbers are, I don't, think, I, I don't think any single number necessarily matters as much as a trend matters. So keep that in mind. Um, and not everybody is going to achieve those perfect uh, lab studies, and up to 40% of patients uh, don't respond, and those 
tend to be uh, younger women and men of any age. And it's unclear exactly how to treat non-responders. Uh, and of course, this again, this may be a non-issue uh, once the beta-colic acid comes, but I, but I think it's still going to be an important concept no matter what the specific treatment is. Um, right now, one option is to add steroids um, or to reconsider the diagnosis. Um, and one of, the, one of the diagnoses to consider is an overlap syndrome uh, between PBC and autoimmune hepatitis. Uh, and in that case, a liver biopsy is absolutely needed. So I think that if treatment isn't working, you're sure that you're on the right dose, um, even if, it's, if it's ursodiol or if it's obeta-colic acid, um, it's important to consider whether or not a liver biopsy uh, or, or just a general reconsideration of whether you have the right diagnosis is important. Um, because sometimes that does actually happen. Um, in um, autoimmune hepatitis, uh, the bile duct injuries themselves can happen, but they don't uh, tend to be the most prominent feature. Often the ALT uh, and the AST are higher, and treatment involves steroids. And so, and that's, and that's I think, where um, it's really important to consider a, a liver biopsy because um, I kind of think of steroids as the way that Churchill described democracy, and that is that it's the, the best, the worst form of government that there is except for everything else. And sometimes all you, the only option you have is steroids, but you should only be on steroids if there's really good evidence that it's treating the specific disease that you have. Um, so what if the AMA is negative? And that's going to be true in about 5% of uh, PBC patients. And, and that's another uh, situation where a liver biopsy is needed to make sure that uh, there's a pattern that is at least consistent with PBC and to make sure that there isn't something else. Um, and if the AMA is negative, uh, clinically, your uh, progression of disease and your response to treatment is going to be pretty much identical to somebody who is AMA positive with the same prognosis. Um, and so I think the biggest question that especially I get asked at a cancer center, and I think one of the reasons that uh, motivated inviting me today was um, uh, what is the relationship between PBC and cancer, and if you have uh, uh, a, another type of cancer, uh, what do you have to worry about if you have PBC? Um, and so I think it's important to understand, and hopefully you all do, that um, PBC in itself is not a risk for getting cancer. Um, but um, cirrhosis uh, is a risk for getting liver cancer. Um, and, and, and just because you have cirrhosis, that doesn't mean that you're going to get liver cancer. It just means that you need to make sure that you have good follow-up with your doctor, and it includes some form of imaging of your liver so that if you are at risk for liver cancer, it can be caught early. Um, if you're being treated for another type of cancer, urso and... Um, other uh, parts of your treatment for PBC are not going to uh, cause cancer. And most medicines, I can't think of actually any medicines that are not compatible with cancer treatment. I have, I have not seen a single patient who has cancer and PBC where we had to compromise, stop, or otherwise alter their treatment for PBC as a result of their having an additional malignancy, another type of cancer. Um, so I think that that's an important concept to, to remember. Um, and so what should family members do? Well, there was a, a study done at Mayo Clinic that said that uh, first-degree relatives are at risk if they are AMA positive. Um, overall, it, uh, it's, you're at risk. Uh, there's 13, about 13% 13 of first-degree relatives of an affected patient um, versus 1% of control. So, uh, clearly, there is a, a higher risk in family members. Um, that risk tends to be uh, higher in female relatives. Uh, of an affected patient, sisters have about a 20% uh, risk of having the disease themselves. Mothers, 15%. Daughters, about 10%. Brothers of an affected patient, and this is male or female patient, um, the risk is uh, less than 10%. Fathers, less than 5%. And sons, essentially 0%. Um, so what should family members do? Well, when they went back and looked at the same data, um, they found that, um, that really it, it, it comes down to lab tests. Um, 
first degree relatives, maybe at slightly higher risk of getting PBC if they're AMA positive, but if their alkaline phosphatase is normal, uh, the risk of PBC is very low for the rest of their life. Um, the AASLD does not have clear guidelines about screening family members. Um, they sort of say it's unclear. They say that first degree relatives, especially females, could be tested for their alkaline phosphatase um, and the AMA if the alkaline phosphatase is negative, although the value of screening is not clear. Um, so I wish we had more concrete guidelines uh, to give, but I, I think my recommendation is just make sure that if you have PBC, that uh, siblings and children, maybe even parents, at least get checked just to make sure that they don't have abnormal labs. Um, and so another question that I get a lot is, uh, did I do something wrong to get PBC? And the answer is no. Um, the risk factors are not clear. Um, um, I think that it's always good advice to just avoid unhealthy choices <laughs> for whatever kind of non-specifically that means just, just in the sense that you just want to take care of yourself. You want to not drink to excess. You want to watch your diet. Um, there aren't particular jobs. Um, I think people worry about industrial exposures and things like that. And, and especially uh, here uh, in the, uh, on the Gulf Coast, I often get asked the question, well, I, I, I worked with this sort of chemical in this plant. Is that why I got PBC? And the answer is nobody really knows. And, and I've and, and I think that until we know that there's specific risk factors, I think the bottom line is just live your life. Um, and so PBC is a chronic disease. Treatment of it and monitoring are lifelong. Symptoms are variable. Uh, sometimes finding a solution is trial and error. And I, I think the key is finding a specialist that you work well with. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? And I think a lot of these questions may have been answered earlier by Dr. Veerling, but. Okay, good question. So the questions uh, were, what uh, is the difference between AST and ALT, and what do they measure? So they are nonspecific markers for inflammation, usually in the liver. The ALT uh, tends to be more specific to inflammation affecting the liver. They can be elevated if there's muscle injury. Um, AST is less specific, um, but they are nonspecific markers of inflammation. The question I, I, I and, and, and the level uh, matters to some extent. Um, uh, liver doctors think in terms of, of, of a multiple above normal. Um, and and um, I think that that's an important thing to do. It's not necessarily the number itself, it's how far above uh, the multiple of normal that that value is. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything specific about uh, PBC though. It's, it just says that there's some kind of inflammation happening in the liver. The ALT is the one that is more specific for inflammation involving the liver. But although uh, ALT and AST are generally tracked uh, in, in any patient who has liver disease, uh, the response to treatment is really based upon the alkaline phosphatase and the bilirubin. I, I think that they're important uh, markers to uh, keep track of and not ignore because they can be a sign uh, that there's something else going on affecting the liver or perhaps the treatment isn't working. But it would be unusual to have an elevated ALT in the presence of a normal alkaline phosphatase and bilirubin in somebody who has it, their only disease being PBC. Sometimes uh, drugs uh, can cause elevations in ALT and AST, and I think the, the important thing to mention there is that um, a, lot of, a lot of doctors, uh, either the ones that you are seeing or uh, for treating your PBC or uh, primary care doctors, uh, many people are on statins uh, and uh, for reasons that they should be on statins for. And I think that there's, there's a big fear that uh, if the ALT or the AST, usually the ALT, if it's elevated or if it's normal and then you start a statin, if it becomes elevated, 
that that means that you're injuring your liver or that you need to back off your treatment for the PBC or that you can't have your uh, elevated cholesterol and lipids treated. Actually, it's, it's, the important thing is just to have the ALT monitored over time because the ALT and the AST can actually become elevated not because there's true liver injury, but because the drug that you just got started on or the dose was adjusted, it's, it's being metabolized by your liver so that the ALT and the AST can rise. And I know I said that, that it's a marker of inflammation, but it can also just be a marker of increased liver metabolism. So typically, if you get started on a statin, you could expect the numbers to go up, but then shortly thereafter, they should plateau. They may stay elevated slightly, uh, but a lot of times they just go back down to either the levels that they were before or close to the levels. So again, it's, it's the pattern uh, over time. It's the trend over time that's more important than the absolute numbers. That's an excellent question, and I don't think there are any hard and fast answers for that. Um, I think that, that um, probably uh, early adulthood is um, the youngest that, that I would recommend. But I think that, that it's also reasonable to ask a pediatric hepatologist that question as well. So those are good questions. Um, I, I, think, I think you know you're underdosed if uh, you're not responding. Uh, there could be other reasons for not responding, but you're not really labeled or considered to be a non-responder until you're on the right dose for three to six months. Um, so I think that the danger in being underdosed is that you don't know how to adjust your medicines, um, and you don't know whether you're one of those people's, uh, people that needs to have a diagnosis reconsidered. So, um, I think it is dangerous to being, uh, I think there is some danger in being under, under treated. Um, does anyone know the answer of if you're sort of at 80% of what your treatment, does that mean that you're only at 20% higher risk of having a problem with your liver? I don't think there's a great answer for that. Um, I think that, that there have been some studies, especially uh, in studies of, of, of the use of uh, um, ursodiol in PSC uh, in the past, um, where they said that very, very high doses of PSC could be a risk, cancer, uh, risk factor for colon cancer. Um, I've never seen a patient of, of mine uh, develop, I, I don't notice that, uh, I haven't observed that, that PBC patients are necessarily at higher risk for colon cancer. Um, but I think that there is a danger in, uh, in, in, in just saying, well, if, 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 uh, if good is, is this much, then if I take uh, twice that amount, then it's going to be better. Um, there's, no, there's no improved benefit from taking uh, a higher dose than you should of uh, or so.